Nine and a half, half inch to go, one three inch depth. Alright, now we're going to do a pretty good size hole in the center for the router with a Forstner bit. Never tried to use a Forstner on plastic, we'll see how it goes.
but it came together in a fashion that was like a three-headed monster. It just worked. It just clicked. Right, I've roughly decided it now. Yep, we got a little bit of taper. One of these, probably this one, is a little out of line with that one. It's a little lower, so we have a taper. Now that means we'll be at a taper as far. By tilting this one a little bit, and tilting this one a little bit, let's say we want a one-inch taper, 
we would tilt this back about one and a half inch lower than the other end and then do the same thing and we'd have a tapered spa. That's kind of neat. Now for the sanding, this is what I made up but it's way too long. So. This is 40 grit. We do some with 40 grit and then some with, uh, unfortunately we got that, which is not a good thing, but we'll see. This is a lot of tension on this. That's coming along nicely. Uh, we're going to need to go to the other side and do this so that it keeps pulling it on, not off. I'm almost ready to do the 80 grit, but we'll do just a little more of this. Whichever way we're going, we're still unscrewing one of these. However, what we'll do is we'll make up a couple of these with the uh, with the four flanges epoxied on. And that'll solve that problem. Okay, we're good for that. Let's uh, let's try some 80 grit. Take away the uh, the uh, join in the original in the factory belt acted on the lathe, so I'm just going to cut that off. It's not like we don't have enough.
Okay, since this is such a less, uh, small, uh, it's a much finer grid, it's only uh, it's 80 grit instead of 40 grit, I think probably there won't be as much uh, pull on it and we can, we can leave it on this side. Let's try a bit of a persuader. This one didn't get in there, I guess. from this test so far is that these uh, nipples need to be shortened up. The shorter they are, the straighter they are, and the longer they are, the less straight they are. Also, we have to be a lot more careful when we adjust that router. It's got to be adjusted uh, off when it's turned off. Because as you can see, we've got a bit of a divot there. Otherwise, it's, it's really good. We have to also have to make sure that we tighten these uh, floor flanges up. I don't think they need to be epoxied, just tightened up good with a wrench. Uh, also at the end of this test, I noticed that the uh, sheave was loose. So we either need a, a, a better flat or, or needs to tighten up the uh, hex head bolt, uh, probably a better flat. So that's what we, for so far, but it seems to be uh, pretty good. I like the idea that we can get a tape. If we just tilt this one a little bit and this one a little bit and, and measure at the end, and if, a, uh, if it's a half inch lower in this end than off this end, then this end is going to get tapered. And that should be, give us a one inch taper altogether. So pretty successful. Next, the first task will of course, well we're gonna, we've got a couple more test pieces. Here's a longer one, here's a longer one. Uh, we'll do those first and then we'll do the bow sprit. Now the, I, I, it is better to do the, uh, use the router to get a kind of a 16 side because otherwise it's uh, it's really banging around uh, that seems to work out pretty well so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut this apart 
and put a coat of epoxy on it and see what it looks like.